Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to check out Val with his video Logical Problem of the Trinity Debunked. I like the title because it presupposes that there is a logical problem with the Trinity. You never heard about a logical problem of Tawhid. Why is that so? All right, guys, before we get into this video, if you like my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Does the Trinity contradict logic? Yes, it does. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's all. Just kidding. I don't see it. Yeah, he's people right. People bring up the logical problem of the Trinity as their argument against Christianity. If you affirm the Trinity with- I mean, it is pretty funny that there is such a thing as the LPT, the logical problem of the Trinity. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the Trinity. From the seven following premises that there is one God, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father. Yeah, exactly. And that is the logical problem because you say there is one God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Spirit is God. The Father, on the other hand, is not the Son. And the Son is not the Spirit. And the Spirit is not the Father. In order to explain this, Christians often like to give you examples. <laughs> Sometimes they talk about an egg. The egg has an egg shell, an egg yolk, and an egg white. Don't you see? The egg yolk is not the egg white, but they are all an egg. Thank God in Islam we are safe from such things, because in Islam we say that imagination cannot fathom God. And therefore, if you want to give examples from the creation, you will never be able to describe God. Moreover, within Islam we have the 99 names of Allah, and from a Christian standpoint, then, you would have to say, well, 99 names, they're all attributes of God, but one name is different than the other name, so therefore that name is not that name, and therefore you have 99 persons of God. Which leads to absolute obscurity, of course. Christians proclaim that you need to have three persons in order to allow multiplicity in God. Why would you? Why would you need a Father and a Son and the Holy Spirit in order to explain multiplicity within God. You still have attributes within God, for example, him being loving or him being the judge, him being eternal, etc., etc., you name it. So you don't go on then and say all of those things are attributes. You draw the line at those three so-called persons. And it is exactly this limitation to those three persons then that leads to a logical problem within the Trinity. Now, critics of the Trinity will make the claim that this leads to tritheism. So it doesn't lead to tritheism immediately. It actually leads to incoherence. When you affirm the Father is God, the Son is yeah. God, the Holy Spirit is God, and these three are not each other, you are making three is God statements where the subjects are not identical. So it logically follows there are three gods. Yeah, so this is a portion of the LPT or the logical problem of the Trinity objection. We hear from Muslims and anti-Trinitarians basically claiming that the Trinity goes against the principle of non-contradiction. No, making three is God statements does not logically follow there are three gods. You are already building a false premise by not differentiating between <laughs> okay, person and... Sure, now we're going to get into all kinds of semantics and mental gymnastics in order to proclaim that just making three is God statements does not automatically tell you that there are three gods. No, of course not. Now you're gonna say, hey, we're not talking about the being here. No, we're talking about the persons. Ultimately, you're using a loophole just as if I would say, hey, listen, guys, I am one man, one human being. However, I have a personality disorder. And within this human being, I have three persons. I have Bobby, I have Sandy sometimes, and I have Mark. 
So this is exactly what you're saying. You're saying there is only one God, but there are three persons. However, if you look into the doctrine, no matter how you want to phrase it, yes, you're worshiping three different beings. It does not matter that you call them persons. There are three gods. You are already building a false premise by not differentiating between person and being. The three gods issue presented by the LBT is answered by both social Trinitarianism and relative identity Trinitarianism. Okay, let's read this out. Social Trinitarianism identifies God with all of the divine persons taken together. Relative identity Trinitarianism identifies God with each of the divine persons taken individually. I'm a simple man, you know. The only question I have reading this is, why not worship one God alone? Identity Trinitarianism. That God is trine when counting by persons, but uni when counting by gods, or tripersonal, but monotheistic. And then when you follow that up with there yeah, is only one exactly. God, you end up with the conclusion that there are three gods and there are not three gods, which is logically incoherent. So the only reason it's logically incoherent in the premise you set up is because you are counting by being. As I mentioned earlier, you failed to understand that there is plurality when referring to the hypostases and singularity when referring to the being. In other words, you cannot affirm all seven of those premises. They yeah, again, true. the guy is simply using certain terms in order to justify polytheism. You call them persons and you make a distinction between person and being. Those are the words that you use in order to describe three different entities. That's what you are describing because you clearly say that the father begets the son. So there is an action coming forth from the father that is unique to the father. Moreover, the son has a human experience incarnating into Jesus Christ in that human form, clearly claiming as well that only the father knows certain things that the son does not know. With that, we clearly have a hierarchy of status and moreover, such a clear distinction that cannot then in turn be attributed to God because God within the Christian context is all-knowing. However, the Son is not all-knowing. And therefore, if the Son does not have that attribute, how can he then be God? And with that, you go further into the logical issue of the Trinity. Once, but Trinitarians do affirm all seven of those premises. Again, you can affirm all of those premises if you say there is one being in three distinct persons. The position Loophole. you've assumed in our attacking is something like there are three persons who are one person or one being who is three beings, which absolutely yeah, no form against. of Trinitarianism holds to. Now, when you try to explain the Trinity of okay. how it's not a logical contradiction, that's when you fall into either tritheism or modalism or partialism, some kind of heresy or some kind of incoherence. In other words, the orthodox Trinitarian stance cannot be true. So this is what I wanted to get to because you have failed to understand not only the egalitarian models of the Trinity, but you also have no clue what the orthodox or the monarchical view of the Trinity is. This is absolutely amazing. I come from an orthodox Christian background myself, in case you don't know. The monarchical Trinitarianism standpoint is the standpoint that debunks itself. Let's read this. There are three entities within the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit each of whom share one divine nature and thus are each equally termed God in the predicative sense. The one God in the nominal sense is numerically identical to one of the entities, the Father who is the sole ultimate source of the Son and the Spirit. And it's exactly this last sentence that debunks monarchical Trinitarianism because let's read this again. The Father who is the sole ultimate source of the Son and the Spirit. So here you can clearly see that the Father is the origin of the Son and the Spirit. This is why they call it monarchical Trinitarianism. So therefore the Father is the King. He has the godly attribute to be the King. And so this really makes you question what those people are on about because they're using terminology such as the Father and the King. It is so obvious that those terms have some sort of meaning in them, which ultimately indicate that the Father, the King, is higher than the Son. Everybody would understand that. It's only logical if you would see it that way. Because I am a father and I'm obviously higher in status than my son. I provide for him. I give him a home to live. I give him food, etc., etc. He's dependent upon me. And moreover, he's dependent upon my existence before he came into existence. And the same applies, of course, to the son, even if you believe in a trinity. Because the son, according to your theology, is eternally begotten from the Father. And like this, you cannot claim co-equality. You cannot just name the Father the King and then claim co-equality because there is nobody co-equal 
to the king or the monarchical view of the trinity is as you just reiterated part of the lpt argument which is the three gods issue without knowing that the lpt as a whole doesn't even address monarchical trinitarianism but to be fair the orthodox brothers you responded to didn't present to you the you. orthodox or the monarchical view but you just kind of ignorantly without having any idea of what the orthodox view of the trinity is presented a part of the LPT. And funny enough, you presented okay, so the part no. that is easily answered by all Trinitarian models, which is the three gods problem. Alright, guys, and that's it for today's video. I'm going to keep it very, very short here. I'm going to use the Christian sources in order to debunk all of what he just said, because you heard him using a lot of fancy words here to confuse us. Why not just quote Jesus Christ from your own Bible? Matthew 11, 25 to 26. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. So in this passage, you can clearly see on the one hand, Jesus Christ praising the Father as he does over and over again, and then ultimately claiming that the Father, God, has hidden certain things from the knowledgeable, from the wise, from the intellectual, so to speak, and has revealed it to the children. This is why Jesus Christ says in other passages as well, in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you have to become like children. So remove the intellect, remove the arrogance, and come back to a humble, natural state in which you can recognize who God truly is. But no, you rather use semantics, word games, ancient Greek mythology in order to convince us that we shouldn't praise God alone. We shouldn't pray to one God alone, but rather to three in one. Even though Jesus Christ never taught that, even though the prophets prior to Jesus Christ never taught that either. Ultimately, you're trying to make it very complex, even though the truth is very, very simple. Worship God alone without attributing any partners to him. This is the message that every prophet brought, including Jesus Christ. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support. And now, as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs> Oh